Today's activity is to describe a few things that grandma would say are cool or not about how to drive a manual transmission. Our test vehicle today is a 1990 Jeep Cherokee. It's got a 4 liter 6 and a 5 speed manual transmission. And uh, here we go. First thing to start it. You don't actually have to have it in clutch in because I put it in neutral. On some cars you have to have the pedal in, clutch pedal in to start it. The Jeep, this one anyway, I think it's disconnected. If you don't. We're gonna go for a couple of spins around a block so I can show you some things. thing to note, Grandma would say is a good thing is to short shift, at least that's what some words she would use, but she would say, don't need to rev it up, and that's especially true of an old Jeep 4 liter, you don't need to be revved up at all, so we can shift it, there's really not much reason to shift about 1500 RPMs. drive like grandma <clears throat> you really don't downshift until you get stopped or nearly stopped there's a reason for that you try and downshift without rev matching which we'll talk more about Puts extra burden on some parts inside the transmission called synchronizers. So I've got a list from Grandma. She says the first thing to do, it's not cool is hold the clutch pedal in when you're stopped. So we're sitting here waiting for traffic. Right now we're in neutral with the clutch out. That's a good thing. What you could be doing is be in gear with your foot on the clutch. Now it's not horrible, but the disadvantage of this is there's two bearings inside your clutch mechanism that are now being used. One is called the release bearing. One is called the pilot bearing. They're both busy right now, spinning away. They're in their own grease, which is good, but they are a wear out item. So if you find yourself sitting around for a period of time, you really should just put it in neutral and let the clutch out. The second uncool thing that she says is you don't have to push the clutch in every time you slow down, like I'm doing now, or to turn. Third thing is don't ride the clutch. Did you hear that? riding the clutch because I probably didn't choose my gear very well. Let's review this again. Can't go for a minute. I might as well put it in neutral and let out the clutch and just sit here. Right now the release bearing is not working. Turn up here, I'm going to show you one once again what's not cool. You don't have to push the clutch in to slow down. You don't have to push the clutch in to turn. The thing you don't do either is ride the clutch like that to get going. That means you chose a gear poorly. Those are uncool things. 
Now let's talk about rev matching. So when you're upshifting, you may not realize it, but you're rev matching. Pushing the clutch, engine RPM comes down, RPM comes down, RPM comes down. The engine, when it comes down naturally, is letting the transmission line up and the synchronizers don't have to work so much. It's called rev matching on an upshift. Well, you don't even know you're doing that because when you push in the clutch and let off the gas, the RPM comes down and you're just doing it naturally. Now we're going to talk about rev matching on an upshift. Rev match down, rev match down, rev match down. Now if you want to go back up, what you need to do is bring your RPMs back up to where it should be for the next gear up. I'm going to go all the way second. So we're up to 2500 RPMs. You've probably seen this on the downshift, but on the upshift it's trickier. you got to bring up the RPMs. And the way I'm doing that is I'm just giving the gas a blip, bringing up the RPMs to where I want it to be. That gets me set up for my turn. Now I'm in a good gear that I want to be. I'm also using back compression on the brakes to break the Jeep down instead of using the brakes. Notice I didn't even touch the brakes. I don't encourage downshifting every time. There's no reason to. Usually you can just slow down with the gear that you're in. Look at this again. If I'm going to execute a turn, cruising along fourth gear, approaching 35 miles an hour, I want to make my turn up there. By this Buick Rendezvous, which my friend Alan says looks like it's, uh, well, I won't tell you. Anyway, the backs look kind of fun. I can rev shift it up. Rev shift it again. Let's keep my turn. So you do that to get your gear in the gear that you want to be in before the turn if you want. Obviously you can shift after. Grandma would say that that's cool. Now I'm going to show you something that Grandma doesn't even know about. It's called heel and toe shifting. up in the gears, what we're going to do is instead of rev matching with only our foot on the gas, we're actually going to use the, our foot to brake and gas, whip the gas same time. I'm on the brake, I can go over here and rock the gas over and go get some RPM. Let's do it again. So let me pull over and I'll show you how we did that. The way this is done, if you put your, at least the way I do it, there's different ways, but you can put your big toe essentially on the brake pedal and then put your little toe and just rock your foot over it and you can go get some RPM, as much as you want, to blip the gas. Now the cool thing about that and why I wore my racing shoes is that's what the racers do. So when you're coming hard on the brakes, you can blip it and you can blip it you can blip it to get your RPM up so you can downshift, downshift. And then when you're exiting your corner, after you're off the brakes, you're on the gas immediately and you're in the right gear. There's no waste of time. So, let's try it. Smooth and cool. 
way cool actually. Now some of you may say, well you can always shift before you get there, you don't need to rev match. That's true. I'm going to demonstrate that and why you don't want to do that and why it's uncool to do that. So you want to go right here, it's like I think I want to be in the first gear right here. So you go ahead and go second. You heard that, but I actually went to first right there and actually barked the tires. Why that's uncool is because it's really hard on those synchronizers. I don't know if you saw how hard I had to push to even shift it, but it was a pretty aggressive shift. And it took a lot of uh, effort. Got it. So it's not cool to hold in the clutch when stopped. Check. It's not cool to push the clutch in when slowing or deceleration. And again, you're not taking advantage of the back compression of the engine. Might as well. There's no reason to do that. Push the clutch in when turning. You should already have your decided what your gear was before you go in or out and decide when you're going to shift it but you shouldn't just be holding the clutch in for fun while you're doing the turn it's better to have your drivetrain all engaged and uh, riding the clutch when you're starting out or making a turn you notice by the way if you don't push your clutch in on turns or when you're slowing and decelerating you won't ride the clutch very much it's usually riding the clutch when you come out of those situations so uh, it's normal to shift at slow speeds if you're not going to rev match if you do rev matching, that's cool. And the holy grail is when you do heel and toe shift, it's a lot of fun when you start getting the hang of it. So I'm going to show you one more thing. goofing around. So, let's suppose your clutch fails. You, you, won't, you won't disengage. That's a common fail. Slave cylinder fails or master cylinder. That's, that's a fail mode that can happen. You're stuck because you can't put it in gear with the engine running because your clutch won't release. I won't show it here. And so there's nothing you can do. Well, if you're stranded, there's something you can do. That clutch is only semi-necessary. So the thing to do is go ahead and put it in first gear. And then we're going to start it with it while it's in gear. The, engine will, the starter motor will start the car. It will move the whole car and start the engine when you do this. And then we're going to shift without depressing the clutch. Or modeling the clutch is not there. Now, recently... And just for example, let's suppose that your Jeep is stuck in Rexburg with a broken slave cylinder and uh, you need to drive it 340 miles to where you're going to work on it. This is how you do it. Cool. It's not very easy to shift because now you're making the synchronizer do all the work. Wait for that engine to come down and then the synchronizer to work. Here we are in fourth gear. You have to push the throttle in a little bit to get it to disengage. We're going to take this to second gear here, I think. Notice it's not very smooth. It's hard to drive it smooth this way. See, it doesn't bring its RPMs down very good. You want to choose your path well where there's no traffic and where you can try not to stop. 
Thankfully the Jeep's got a lot of torque and so it'll slow way down without needing to stop completely. have to be patient. Hopefully no old sleepy dog comes out and gets in your way. That's kind of, so you have to slow down. Luckily we didn't have to shift or run over the dog. So, Grandma would say driving without your clutch is uh, very uncool. It's really hard on the synchronizers, and it is. But it is really cool because you might be able to get to where you're going without being stranded. Get it to a place where you can work on it, like in your driveway, like that one. You think it'll stay there time we get there? I really doubt it. Yeah, there she goes. To buy ourselves some time here, hopefully. I'd really rather not go into first gear, but looks like I'm gonna have to because there's cars coming. your uh, education on how to drive the Jeep. So rev matching to downshift without the clutch. Whoa. There it is. Let's see, one of your educational tidbit, I think, for any of those that are interested in practicing. to think that the best way to teach somebody how to get familiar with the clutch and releasing it is put their back tires into a curb like we've got here. First gear off the gas. Go and feel that feather point right where the clutch starts to get engaged. You can feel it. Oh, it's starting to drag the motor down. Feel it. Feel it. Anyway, then get used to, oh, okay, going up and releasing the clutch. Start to engage it, feel it, and then release it. Start to feel it, engage it, and then release it. And just to get the use to what it feels like, that and that trigger point or feather point where it starts to engage. And just get used to, okay, I can I can push it back in at any time I need to if I get nervous about what's going to happen. Oh, okay, push it in. Push it in, that's okay. And then push it in. So just getting used to feeling it and being able to disengage it and engage it appropriately and gently. I guess that's the end of the tutorial. Good luck driving your manual transmission. Enjoy it. While I was editing this video, I had the idea that, or one of the girls asked me, he says, uh, you explain how the clutch works a little bit with your hands. And so I'm going to try that just a little bit um, for you guys. So if you think about your hands, hands are together a little bit like a clutch. You have your engine side and you have your transmission side. Now inside of there, what there is, is called a flywheel on the end of the engine, and you've got a pressure plate that's also part of the engine. In between, there's this, this little disc inside. And so you might think of like a bologna sandwich. you got bread, and you got bread, and you got this bologna in the middle, and you're squeezing those together. That's what the clutch kind of looks like in there. Well, for the purpose of this explanation, we're leaving the bologna out for a minute, but you just got two discs that are going to rub together. And so if they're pushed tight, and they are naturally, they've got springs in there that push them together tight. They want to be together. And so anytime you have the clutch, dis uh, your clutch pedal out, then the clutch is engaged. 
And so if you move the engine or your right hand, then the other hand just follows it and says, hey, I'll go anywhere you want. Anywhere you go, I'll go too. That's, that's your normal driving operation. When you disengage, you're pushing the clutch pedal, then they separate apart a little bit. And so this one now moves independent of this one. So you can coast, you can start the engine, um, you can pull it you know, down the road without the engine running, and then as soon as you put, put them back together, then they bite together, and now they go together. When you're starting out or slipping the clutch, that's when you're rubbing these two together. And if you do that, and you put a lot of pressure on it, you feel, of course, the amount of heat that you're generating between the two, that friction. Well, back to the baloney. That's what kills the, the clutch disc, or the baloney in there, is, is that slipping. And so you want to minimize the slipping. If you want your clutch to last a long time, don't slip it. When you start out, you want to be in a low gear and just slip it a little bit, and then away you go. If you're doing one of the no-nos that I described in the video of coasting, is what you'll do is you'll say, oh, I'm going to stop or I'm slowing down, so I'll disengage the clutch. Now these two are going different speeds. You've got the engine that's idling, you've got this the Jeep that's going some faster speed. And then you turn the corner and you go, and you rub them together and now they get hot and you've just worn out a bunch of disc. It's hard to say, but you might have took out 20 or 30 starts by that little coast-in warm-in that you did with your clutch. You're just going to wear out your clutch prematurely, and those are kind of expensive, and you don't want to do that. So, just remember the bologna inside the bologna sandwich, and just think, eh, I don't want to beat my bologna up in there any harder than I have to, so I won't ever slip it if I don't have to. So that's why one of the rules is, the only time you really push the clutch in is when I'm going to start and get going, and when I'm shifting, and I never do it while I'm rolling. I just, in and out, in and out quick as I can is a, is a better better way to operate your clutch. So my girls took the Jeep to college and uh, they, they gave me a new present, a new birthday present. They uh, put a new muffler. It's got a new sound on the Jeep. They wanted to show it off today. They were thinking about me.
how do we get such a rich sound? Well, this is what I did. I said, wow, what happened? So I went out and looked. all broke apart found out that one of my girls had driven over a curb smashed the muffler in and since falling apart like, how did you get the muffler when it stopped falling up in the air still don't know the answer to that they weren't even off-roading it was in town poor old jeeps they sure get beat up
counting houses. There's one to the right, one to the left. We're out in the middle of a complete rural area. I think we could manage the cars that are clear out here in the middle of nowhere. There just aren't any highways in this place. They're all overcrowded and there's no alternative paths through the whole valley. There's the interstate, two other little highways, and all the rest of them are 35 mile an hour roads. up there you can see it clear over there all the lights the headlight or the windshields of the cars on the left so far traffic is backed up on star roads so that's what it's hard to say probably more than a quarter mile probably approaching a half mile you can't see over the horizon because of the stoplight up here.
slinky going on. Notice the slinky, that truck up ahead. Gives her the gas and slams on the brakes. There's springs and there's dampers. Yeah, the truck's a spring. I'm pretending to be a damper. I'm not giving it any gas. As little as I can, because I'm just going to stop again, just to try and go at constant speed and damping the traffic. That guy's putting a spring in the system. Oh no. 